This is the hidden cost of coronavirus. The second wave of the COVID-19 pandemic may be slowly ebbing, but the fact is the economy has been hit hard, particularly the informal economy. According to the Center for Monitoring Eco Indian Economy, over one crore Indians have lost their jobs in the last two months alone. Apart from job loss, household incomes have also fallen sharply as a result. In a moment, that's going to be our big focus. But first, take a look at this special report from Aishwarya Paliwal. One crore jobs lost. That is how badly the lockdown, triggered by the second wave, has hit the informal sector, according to the Center for Monitoring Indian Economy. The CMI study also says 97% of households have seen fall in an income as a result. 30-year-old Kamesh agrees. He says meeting expenses has become a challenge after salary revisions. Lockdown ho na ho, like jaise medicine hai, aur bhi chije hain, wo admi ko khareedni khareedni hoti hain. Usme na to kisi prakar ki koi subsidy kisi ko hai, na kisi prakar ka koi discount hai. According to CMIE data, India's overall unemployment has risen from 7.97% in April to 11.90% in May. While unemployment is high, future too isn't looking very bright. Many in the hospitality sector are fearing more job losses. So if this continues, it will be very difficult to sustain and run the hotels and there's definitely going to be mass unemployment. So in case uh, we don't receive any help from the government in this regard, it will be very difficult for us to run the hotels further. The other set of aggrieved are traders across the country who were hoping to recover from last year's shutdown. But lockdown 2.0 has made things all the more tough. There has been a huge economic fallout because of the second wave. A lot of big businesses are suffering losses whereas the small ones have permanently shut down across the country. If we believe data, then in the month of May, the unemployment number is higher as compared to the month of April. The question now is, will these people who have been unemployed over the past few months, will they get a chance to get their employment back? And even if they get employed, will they be able to earn the salary which they deserve? Mr. Shwara Paliwal reporting from New Delhi for India Today. So let's uh, then look at those job numbers a little more closely. My first guest is Mahesh Vyas, the Chief Executive for the Center for Monitoring Indian Economy. Appreciate your joining us, uh, uh, Mr. Vyas. Your numbers for unemployment for May, I can tell you, have frightened people. Unemployment rate, according to the CMI, is 11.9%. You've said that as many as 15 million jobs are lost. Yesterday, the suggestion was 10 million. I'm told now your revised numbers are 15 million. This is the worst since April 2020 when there was a national lockdown. The question, Mr. Vyas, is are you being alarmist or is this simply the reality that so many jobs have been lost in the last one month alone? Well, um, it is alarming. I don't think I'm being alarmist. Mm -hmm. So uh, we are stating the facts. The facts are alarming and I think we should take them seriously. I think uh, the uh, warning bells were there in the month of May. We had reported then that there is an increase, a steady increase in the unemployment rate, and there is no movement in the labor participation rate. That means people are losing jobs. We had expected or we had projected that uh, 10 million jobs could be lost in the month of May. The month of May ended yesterday. And this morning we had the numbers crunched and we found that in reality, 15 million jobs were lost in the month of May. Now add to that the seven odd million jobs that were lost in the month of April. So in the last two months, April and May, India has seen 22 or little more than 22 million jobs being lost. Uh, this is something that we should worry about. And uh, I don't think it's fair to call CMI alarmist. You know, those are big numbers. The reason I, you know, used the word alarmist was because it, uh, you know, the numbers itself seem to sort of send us element of shock value. 22 million jobs you are saying lost in the last two months alone, 15 million in the month of May. Is this basically again because daily wage earners and those 
in the informal sector have lost out because several states have imposed a lockdown or is it as we spoke a few weeks earlier uh, Mr. Vyas because in pandemic times and I talk now of 2020 and 2021 even salaried class people have lost jobs. The form that we are seeing now uh, the 22 million jobs lost or the 15 million jobs lost, particularly in the month of May, are predominantly uh, daily wage laborers. So they have lost the jobs uh, because of the lockdown, uh, reduced to mobility, restrictions on movement automatically renders these people unemployed. And uh, you are right, this is largely a reflection of those. Also, uh, there has been a fall in the number of people who are running enterprises, small mm -hmm. enterprises. So if their shops or their enterprises are shut for a reasonably long period, then even they classify, they are classified as unemployed. Uh, there is a steady secular decline in salaried jobs. That continues. But the new thing, which is because of the lockdown, is uh, the daily wage workers. Therefore, what you are saying, Mr. Vyas, and correct me if I'm wrong, is that small and micro enterprises are the ones that have been hurt the most. And they are, that's where the main job losses have taken place, presumably in urban areas. Or are we now saying that the job crisis cuts across rural urban divide as well, that we are seeing double digit unemployment, both rural and urban this time? The double-digit unemployment is across rural and urban. Uh, if you look at the uh, monthly numbers, then urban is a little more than 12% and rural is more than 10% mm -hmm. uh, in decimal points. But if you go weekly, then in the weekend at May 23rd, urban unemployment is 17%. Mm -hmm. So that's really steep. So we are getting impacted both in rural and urban regions. The impact on urban areas is higher than in rural, but rural is not spared this time. What you, what you seem to be suggesting, Mr. Vyas, again, is uh, in your report also, is 97% of household incomes have declined. Can you explain how this has happened? Because we are in a time of high inflation. Then if we have income decline, as your CMI report suggests at the moment, we are being hit with a double whammy. How do you come to this calculation of 97% income decline? Am I correct? This is a double whammy in a way. That's right. So that's another part of the survey that asks people uh, how are their incomes compared to a year ago. And uh, only 3% responded to say that uh, their incomes are better than a year ago. 55% mm -hmm. said they are worse off. And the remaining 42% said that they are the same as a year ago. Now, if you account for inflation, it means that all the 97% people are worse off compared to a year ago. So that's also distressing. So both the unemployment numbers and the income numbers uh, tell us that we should worry. I, I want to understand, do you see any light at the end of this dark tunnel? Given the fact that we are perhaps reaching the end of the COVID 2.0 curve, at least the numbers in urban areas are declining, are we therefore seeing some light at the end of the tunnel when it comes to the job crisis? Yes, there is uh, some hope over there as the um, lockdown uh, is uh, undone and mobility comes back. We will see the jobs of the uh, daily wage workers come back. So there is hope in that. It's obviously going to uh, help. But that doesn't solve a larger problem that the country is not generating enough jobs. And our employment rate is declining uh, steadily. So we require to definitely bump up employment in a big way. Mm -hmm. uh, our employment was 404 million in 2019-20. We are now at 375 million. Even if those daily wage workers get their jobs back, we are not going to touch 405 million very easily. So we have to ramp up the demand, then bring in investments and then bring in jobs. It's a long, difficult journey. Okay, so what you are saying in conclusion is that we have a secular decline in jobs that's carried on for the last couple of years, got accelerated by the lockdown. And what you're therefore saying, we need urgent steps to revive consumer demand bring in investment and thereby get jobs back. Am I correct to say that this is not just a challenge limited to COVID, but a long-drawn challenge for the economy in the months and years to come?
have I summed you up correctly? You are right. You said it correctly. I have summed you up. Well, that's the first time someone's given a succinct answer. That's you're saying that what I'm saying is right, which is d troubling. Appreciate your joining us, Mahesh Vyas of the Center for Monitoring Indian Economy. Let's just widen that for a moment, since, since we want to focus tonight on the jobs. How can we bring back jobs? Is this the is the worst over, as some are suggesting? Or are we looking, as uh, Mr. Vyas seemed to suggest, at a very long haul to revive jobs in the economy? I'm joined by K.E. Raghunathan. He's the convener consortium of Indian Association. This is an omnibus body representing various micro and small uh, enterprises. I'm joined by P.N. Vijay, former convener of the BJP's economic cell. And I'm joined by Gaurav Ballab of the Congress, its spokesperson. Before I come to... Uh, Mr. Vijay and Gaurav Ballab, I want to ask you, Mr. Raghunathan, because you are heading a body that looks at small and micro enterprises. What is the big crisis at the moment that you are facing? Where is, why is it that there seems to be no light at the end of the tunnel as far as small and micro enterprises are concerned? Yes, Mr. Raghunathan, go ahead. Oh, uh, I just got the line connected through. Uh, good evening, Rajdeep. Okay, let me understand this. In my opinion, from the field, mm -hmm. Mr. Mahesh spoke from the data and the survey. Yes. I speak from the field. The job loss, according to me, is close to about three crores. Three crores. Let me explain to you what I mean by job loss. I mean job loss in three categories those who are unemployed, those who have reduction in salary, and those who are not receiving salary for the last two to three months. This is what I call them, because primarily mm -hmm. job means occupation. When I occupy myself, I earn my bread and butter. And if I don't earn my bread and butter, if I simply keep myself only occupied, then it is again a job loss for me. And now, if you see, why is this happening? Is it happening because of uh, only Corona or COVID? Not really. There is, the employers are being lost in this country now, and that is the reason employees are getting lost. Now, employee, employers are getting lost for what? Directly by Corona, deaths are more, employers are gone now, and secondly, because of the various impacts which they have been facing. Now, if you take, for example, in any, any industry, we talk about direct employment, indirect employment. The same way, due to the corona, if you take, the, uh, if, you, if I take a, a festival, for example, if there is no festival, then there are several people who are dependent on the festival who lose their income. If there is no marriages, there are people dependent on that who lose their income. Mm -hmm. Tourism, if it is not there, they lose their income. Gym, saloon, spas, if it is not there, they depend upon, they lose their income. Same way in the company, if we run, I'll give you a small example, Rajdeep. If I'm doing a turnover of 100 rupees a month, and if I make 20 rupees of a profit every month to cover my overheads and the interest and things like that, suppose if I lost eight months due to the lockdown condition, last year six months, this year two months, I assume that I'll be back into normal. Then I have lost. 20 rupees a month into 8 months, 160 rupees. Now, if I have to do at 30% more in, uh, uh, sales, yes. which is at 130 rupees, if I take 20% of 130 rupees, I make 6 rupees additionally. To cover my 160 rupees, I need 28 months. At 30% increase in sales. You're saying therefore that... Happen. You're saying, therefore, effectively, that the damage caused by six months of a lockdown last year and two months of a lockdown this year is something that you will take 28 months to recover from. Am I correct? With an assumption that I will do 30% more business. Okay, I've but, got it. But, so, but in reality, it is not so. My raw material prices have gone up by 45%. So it is continuously eroding me. So before COVID, if there are already people who have done business with accumulated losses, right. be it automobile sector, micro industries, or be it real estate sector, they continue to make losses only. So I when are we going to see the light back? 
when are we going to recover back let when me, are we going to let provide me take jobs? that let me take that to a pn vijay and gaurav uh, balla pn vijay why don't you take a shot at this when are we going to see the light back you see the government spokesperson say that all is well that we are going to see a v shaped recovery that therefore what you are seeing are temporary blips caused by the pandemic last year and now two months this year that things will get better that there are these dormant energies that will be released the moment the economy opens up is it as bright as that or as mr raghunathan is saying this is a long term serious crisis i think i i go with what uh, mahesh was saying earlier in his uh, uh, chat with you of course i don't represent the government or the bjp now but the problem is very serious rajdeep let me split it into two different problems one is the spike in the unemployment rate both rural and urban is to large extent due to the covid we saw that in may remember when when these numbers shot up to 14 15% they did come back to 10% levels in september october which meant that some of the unorganized sector got back their jobs as cmi data also say but then that's only part of the story because on a slightly longer term basis from the last 3 years there has been job destruction in the country the number of people employed has come down by something like 8 to 9% and even after covid 2 I, i feel that the unemployment in this country may be close to double figures maybe 9 to 10% which is alarming and the sad part is there are two things about this the first thing is the government does not recognize this as a big problem this i think is the biggest problem we have in india today that everybody uh, as uh, the previous gentleman was saying is seeing in the unorganized sector total mayhem businesses being decimated but people still talk in aggregates and fiscal deficits and this that and in their aggregates the unemployment rate does doesn't figure at all neither from the finance ministry nor from the rbi have i seen a seri- serious statement on the job crisis so the first thing government should do is recognize that it has a very serious problem and this is the root of all problems because as mahesh was saying the incomes are falling so how are you going to revive an economy and get jobs there is no demand so you need to increase demand in the economy 97% of people if they are saying they're worse off than one year back then they're not going to go out and spend money right so how are you going to revive this economy even after covid there is no serious suggestion from the government on that the, the problem is all supply side economics from the government there is no demand uh, economics so you and i think if you want me to sound positive mm-hmm. after covid government has to bring in some sort of uh, unemployment uh, doll something like narega in urban areas this is the first uh, vaccination or injection we have to give you you are giving us an important suggestion you are saying just don't have mandrega for rural india you will need a possible doll for urban unemployment post like, covid like yesterday we need it like yesterday we need we it like yesterday well like there yesterday. are you know there are those who are saying and and that's a good point to take to gorab ballab i know that the congress has been talking about providing a minimum income even now some kind of a minimum income to be provided to those below the poverty line now the government on its part is saying look we are putting together various stimulus programs that will have an impact that this is temporary this is not permanent how do you respond Uh, Rajdeep, uh, I, I will start my uh, statement with this 2016-17 data. Mm-hmm. In 1617, our GDP was 8.3 percent, and in 1920, our GDP was 4 percent. Means in three years, our GDP got reduced by more than half because of demonetization and because of the way GST got implemented. And then in 2019-20, our unemployment rate was somewhere between 7 to 8 percent. which was 2% in 2011-12 so we were at 8% before the pandemic entered then the pandemic entered into our system then what we did we did four hours notice and closed down all economic activity what had happened we are seeing minus 7.3% of the gdp and 12 crore 20 lakh people had lost job in april 2020 as per cmi 74 lakh people had lost the job in april 2021 as per center for monitoring of indian economy this is their own data now where is the problem problem rajdeep is of the capacity utilization 
if you see the capacity utilization of our manufacturing sector for q1 q2 and q3 it is at 59% which was 78% in 2013 and 70% in 2019 which is right now at 59% now you are saying how jobs will be created it is about the jobs are bound to be gone because our capacity utilization of manufacturing is only 59% no, but you have to now accept that we've gone through a lockdown which was necessary we can dispute whether the lockdown had to be at 4 hours notice or not but there's a general consensus across the world that you needed a lockdown to break the chain across yeah, the world the economies have declined gora balab let's be honest it's not as if india is yeah, the only yeah. country that's been hit okay rajdeep my question uh, is very simple uh, i think that uh, why bangladesh please please sir my my answer is very simple rajdeep hmm. why bangladesh myanmar china bhutan vietnam nepal pakistan indonesia south korea lanka malaysia thailand 140 uh, two countries are doing better than us in, in the world the covid had affected every country of the world why out of 194 countries 142 countries of the world are showing a better gdp numbers because we had we had reduced our gdp by more than half because of demonetization and the wrong way of implementation of gst then came the six four hour notice uh, lockdown and then rajdeep mm. when the entire world was vaccinating mm -hmm. vaccinating and vaccinating what we were saying the self obsessed leader came out and said jeet gaye jang badhai ho corona ko hara diya and what what we had seen now the second wave is not corona wave i will call it as a government failure wave okay. because government that's, was not able to vaccinate that is the reason we are in second wave no, no, and because of that second wave mm -hmm. our gdp and unemployment numbers are going up consistently I, without vaccination the economy will not come on track as the no no gora balla the fact that point is taken the fact is other countries have also gone through second wave let's be clear yeah. this is a pandemic you know, my, countries have gone through second and even third wave now we my, can argue my, my, how countries have responded i want solutions no, no. i want I, solution I what is it uh, no no let's be clear that. what I'm, is the I solution my opinion is that. not going to help much one minute, one minute. minute. number 1 rajdeep let me complete yes number 1 solution that v v and v v means vaccinate vaccinate and vaccinate have a time bound vaccination not like giving another jumla 31 december 2021 tak kar denge are vaccine kahan hai bhai sahab where is the vaccine the china is vaccinating every day 1.5 crore people doses per day we are vaccinating on an average 15 and 1/2 lakh doses per day this is number 1 number 2 rajdeep our gdp is a consumption driven uh, gdp 60% of our gdp contribution comes from the consumption you have to increase consumption for that increase in consumption you have to transfer money not only in the lower income group of the society but also to the middle class people who are losing jobs year after year month after month day after day well, 74 lakh people had lost the jobs in april 2021 Well, no, you, 2020, no, so how yeah, about you? No, no, one minute. You are talking of an unemployment dole. You are talking now yeah. of an unemployment dole. Is it that any, every no, Indian no, who has I, lost a job gets some benefit I, I, from the government? I, 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 I am saying that you have to transfer new money in the hands of the people, including the people who lost the job. Okay. America, why, why America was able to come out, Rajdeep? Because they had declared one-time direct payment to the people who lost jobs in the pandemic. they gave 2400 dollar to each couple who had lost their jobs in the family Let they had increased their unemployment allowance that okay. is the reason they were able to uh, you made your uh, point start the economy back okay gaurav balab you made your point pn vijay what's the solution yeah i think uh, we should uh, not get too carried away by other things uh, first is i think uh, rajdeep let's look at it this way we need a short term solution and a slightly longer term solution the short term uh, solution is clearly direct transfer to the urban poor like we have done for the rural poor to get the unemployment in urban areas uh, down right. at least to about 9 10% this has to be done this won't cost that much uh, with the way uh, taxes are being raised on petrol government can manage it but that's only a shock therapy going forward we need to identify areas like msme construction housing hospitality tourism which are employment intensive and give do everything possible for example i'll give you an example construction industry has got the highest 
um, employment multiplier among all industries. What has the government done for the construction industry? Today, you talk to any real estate group, even the best ones, they are flattened out. They have, there are so many taxes, there are so many regulations. How are you going to improve jobs? These are the people who are going to create jobs. I, How do MSMEs get contracts? They get contracts from developers. They get contracts from hospitality companies. So unless you take industry by industry and pump up those industries purely from the employment point of view, the basic problem with this government's approach is it is not taking a job-oriented approach to the economy. Very interesting, very interesting what you're saying. You're saying specific packages for specific industries to revive exactly. in a way the horses job potential yeah. of those industries. Tourism, construction are two examples that you gave. Very yeah. quickly, Mr. Raghunathan, as a final response, if you had to give one suggestion to the government as a representative of the small and micro enterprises, what would that be? Very simple, Rajdeep. If there is a wall, we can draw the painting. The wall here is a micro enterprises. I told you, unless the micro enterprises survive, there will be no creation of jobs. You can continue to give them unemployment dose, but how long you will be able to give? So you must look after the employers. Now, only thing is for the next two years, micro enterprises, micro entrepreneurs must be allowed to concentrate only in doing business activities. Let us increase the threshold limit of the GST from the 2 crores to 5 crores so that they are out of the clutches. You can't keep a, a rifle on my neck and then ask me to perform. So keep the threshold out. Okay. Keep all the bank loans with the uh, unconditional restructuring for next two years. Allow us to perform. Allow us to be alive. Allow us to live peacefully. Allow us to handle the problem. We know how to take care of our employees. We have taken care of them. Today, we are sitting on the first of the month. Till minute, we are talking. There is no moratorium given to us. Now, I have only 10 rupees in my bank. And 8 rupees is my moratorium. Whether I like it or not, tomorrow morning, my banker will take it away from me. How will I pay salary? How will I pay rent? How will I pay EB bill? Now, what am I to worry about? Am I to worry about GDP? Am I to worry about this, that, all that? I am okay. worried about what I need today is moratorium. What I need is you take care of me. I will take care of my dependents. Now, who will allow me to survive? I, think I need survival. I need vaccination for the employers. My you need a vaccination. Must be given vaccination. Okay, so there's vaccination for the citizen, vaccination for the employers. Lots of suggestions have come in these 15 minutes from the three gentlemen here. It's been refreshingly, to some extent, non-partisan, which is the way it should be. This is a crisis that's going to endure even beyond COVID 2.0. And I think we need to recognize that the job crisis is going to be a pandemic in its own way in the months and years ahead, possibly. For now, I appreciate all three of you joining Thank me. Thank you. News without the noise. Thank you.